this meeting. Thank you. And uh, I was looking over everything that happened in session three. We had the talks from Dr. Ahankai and Dr. Throckmorton, and then those five breakout groups. And I realized it's a complete lost cause to try to summarize everything that went on in that session three. We've got an excellent uh, writer here that's going to help us create a uh, workshop summary, which will summarize uh, some of the great points that were made there. So instead, what I'm going to try to do is squeeze onto my head my sponsor uh, hat, but also my former regulator hat, and also my uh, former Surgeon General hat, and take a kind of broader view and let you know some of the things that have been going on in, in my mind as I've been listening to these great ideas. The first is an overwhelming sense of optimism. I think we have a very high energy among all of the sectors that are here towards doing more to converge or harmonize, and it seems to me we've got a, a consensus of views at least around some of the things that need to happen. So I, I feel like this has been very beneficial and feeling optimistic about it. But stepping away for a second, one theme that is, is I think, very clear is that looking around the globe, one of the things that's happening is a homogenization of afflictions facing humanity. So as the, as the globe uh, develops more, infectious diseases, although still a huge scourge and a need for special products, diminishing chronic diseases in India and China, the whole world is going to need the same medical products more and more and more. We're not quite there yet. With the concomitant increase in the global standard of living, um, more people around the world are going to be able to spend resources, still limited now, but over time, people are going to be able to afford more and more the same medicines. Uh, at the same time, as you know, the medical product industry continues to consolidate. So we will always have small companies, we will always have regional companies, but by and large, companies are consolidated and becoming more and more global, and these companies have to operate in dozens or even more than a hundred different regions. So the complexity, the very idea that we're not focusing a lot of resources on harmonization is, is hard to understand, uh, put, it, put it that way. As you all know, the costs of product development have been ballooning, and I won't belabor that fault, but each new product is more and more costly than the last one. And so there's a real imperative to try to figure out how to reduce those costs. At the same time, now putting on my former regulator hat, the costs to government are out of control. Each of the major developing entities in Japan, in the EU, in the US, other places, they're under enormous cost pressures. As we speak, uh, the US government is, is formulating plans to, you know, shut down and reduce costs uh, if we have this physical cliff that occurs in a few weeks. So there's a tremendous imperative on the governments as well to economize and to figure out how to avoid duplication of efforts. So in each of the areas that were touched on in uh, session three, the tools, the clinical development, the evidence basis, part post-marketing safety, manufacturing processes, the way I see it, we don't really have a choice. We must harmonize, we must become more efficient, we must converge, and I, I think we're all at the same place. We just need to figure out of all the ideas that we've heard, what are some reasonable next steps? And I think we've got some good ideas. They won't be one set of next steps for everyone. I think each of the components here, the nonprofit groups, the governments, sponsor companies, and others, they can each take on projects, including this, this Institute of Medicine that we're part of, because there's so much to do, it's not going to be done by one group or one organization. There are parts that involve scientific assessment, there are parts that involve technical collaboration that can easily be done by segments. I just want to focus on two of them that I've heard that to me 
stand out as being very, very important. I'm not saying they're the most important, but they're, they're two that have really um, stuck out to me. One, I'm looking at our one of the few uh, economists at the Food and Drug Administration back there. I know she's going to love it, Teresa Mullen. She's looking around, but I'm talking to her. Um, so economic analysis. Let me just say, regulators don't invest enough resources in doing economic analysis. I am convinced that if we had a high quality economic analysis done of harmonization, it will show that it will save an enormous amount of resources for sponsors and for governments themselves. We don't have that sort of rigorous analysis and I, I really do think that that needs to be done. It can be done in a variety of ways, but we can, we can do it together. The second is touching on the point that we heard from Dr. Lufkins, a, a Dutch regulator here. Um, those points where the same regula where regulatory agencies have looked at exactly the same data and come up to, with different conclusions need to be examined more closely. We have to try to understand why that's taking place. The obvious reasons like cultural differences or ethics differences, we really are just guessing why these are happening. I think we could help understand ourselves, be more self-aware if we understood why regulators are making different decisions with the same data. So that's sort of my big picture impressions so far and I'll pass it back to the next speaker. Thank you. Great. Uh, our next speaker will be James Fitzgerald. He is the, as a reminder, the Senior Advisor of Essential Medicines and Biologicals at the Pan American Health Organization.